I would like start shaking and I was just like very nervous. I would like start sweating. It was scary. And I was confused about like what was going on. Depending on the year, Latinas have one third more suicide attempts than their white counterparts. And right after you try to take your life, do you remember feeling angry? I felt angry because I didn't succeed. As a parent, you're supposed to protect your child, and it's so hard to protect them against their own mind. A lot of young Latinos across the country, not just here in Milwaukee, are feeling very anxious. They're feeling very depressed. Why do you think they're scared to talk? Because in the Mexican culture, usually people that have mental issues don't really seek help, and it's not really spoken of. We have over 40 years of data saying this is a problem. So there's something that's been happening in front of our eyes and we've barely been paying attention. And that's the fact that young Latinas across this country are suffering. They've been facing higher rates of depression, anxiety, and even suicide attempts. So we came to Wisconsin, a state that over the years has experienced an exponential growth in the Latino population, to try and understand what are some of the factors and the barriers that may be contributing to this crisis. All right, Jasmine, how are you feeling this week? Guilty and lonely. You want to share what's going on? I cut. You cut? When was that? Wednesday. On Wednesday, okay. Walk us through th the thoughts you were having. That I didn't want to be here and that's the only way I can get rid of my pain. How's your family taking this news of you cutting again? Um, I haven't really talked to anybody except my dad about it. He seemed really, really mad. Remember we've talked about this before, anger? Secondary emotion, right? Above the surface, that's the one we show. Underneath that anger, there's worry. All right, well, thank you for sharing. SEEDS is a four-month-long program at Milwaukee's 16th Street Medical Center that offers a space for girls ages 13 to 16 to confront issues like anxiety, depression, and suicide. And since SEEDS was created, could you paint a sort of a general profile of the type of girls that come here? The majority of them are Latina. In order to participate in the program, there has to be a mental health diagnosis, but that can range from something like an adjustment disorder. So a teenage mm -hmm. girl is going through something challenging in their life. There's family stressors. There's a lot of uh, you know, immigration issues mm -hmm. or deportation issues. Other girls have depression diagnoses. Others have anxiety. Um, a lot of the girls that come into the group are hesitant because of their anxiety, but what we've found is their anxiety lowers uh, the more they participate mm -hmm. in this group. Brenda, how are you feeling this week? I feel happy, stressed. Stressed? Yeah. Okay, what's stressing you out? I just had a lot of work done today, but I was fine, I finished it. And happy? Yeah. What are you feeling happy about? I just felt like a man and I just got closer. Made a new friend. Nice. Yep. It's important. Friends are good. Okay. Great. Thank you. Brenda's a first-generation teen living in Milwaukee's South Side. When Brenda was 12, her father was wrongfully arrested and detained for two years. Because Brenda is under 18 and her mother's undocumented, she was unable to see her father during that time. So do you spend a lot of your time here? Yeah. Is this where you do your homework, where you like chill? Yeah, you should be most of the time. And a lot of these pictures are your family, right? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your family. My parents are from El DF, Mexico, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Have you ever been to Mexico? No, I want to. I know that your father went through some very difficult times, right? Yes. Can you walk me through through that moment? My dad was telling my sister, like, text my, my boss and tell him, like, if I don't come back, it's because I'm in jail. And I was so confused and I was like shocked and I was like, why are you going? And they didn't want to answer me. Maybe like a half hour later, they came and I decided to go out to see what was going on. And I kind of regret seeing it because it traumatized me so much. What did you see? My dad asked him if like, they wanted to handcuff him, knowing that he was going to get handcuffed. Like, it was scary. Do you remember when you came back to the house? What were you thinking? It just felt so lonely. It just mm -hmm. felt like something was missing. 
And I just try to stay strong for my mom. Mm -hmm. But there is like no way because like my dad was gone. Now, there was times, many times where like I just had breakdowns mm -hmm. where I would have anxiety attacks. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to control them. So that's how my mom like put me and we started realizing that mm -hmm. I actually needed like help, like professional help. I love you too. Sí, me encantaría si me, si me puede explicar más los, los dibujos. En mis tiempos adentro pues, yo hacía dibujos para mis hijos para que no se olvidaran de mí. Mm. Pues les decía cuánto los quería. Mm -hmm. Es feo que pero sufriera mis hijos. Y pues yo quería alejarlos un poco con, con un dibujo con una carta, con mi, mi preciosa hija. Sabes que todo lo que, todo el tiempo pienso en ti. Me estaba enfrentando muchos años en, en prisión, pero gracias a Dios comprobé mi inocencia uh -huh. y estoy con ellos. ¿Piensan que todavía tienen que vivir en las sombras, aunque usted ya volvió? Sí, todavía. When you guys see like a, a nice car, when you see a police car, when you hear a siren, What does that make you feel? It's it's nerve-wracking. Yeah. It's like really nervous. Like it's scary. I remember when I first moved into this house, like the third day, I fell down the stairs. And they were like, let's call the paramedics. Let's call it because I couldn't move. And I was like, no. I was in so much pain. But I was scared that if the police came and asked I don't know, like, as for my parents' identification or something, they would take them. But I prefer to be in pain than for them to call the paramedics. ¿Por qué decidieron pedir ayuda? El verlas tan, tan afectadas que era que ya no querían hablar, entonces empecé yo a decirles que tenían que hablar y empezar a soltar lo que sentían para que ellas pudieran sentirse un poco mejor con lo que estaban viviendo. Ah, yo les dije, de hecho, que si no querían hablar conmigo, a buscar a alguien donde ellas sintieran la, la suficiente confianza para expresar lo que sentían. Pero particularmente con Brenda, eh, ya que ha pasado por el programa de SEEDS, ¿han visto cómo ha mejorado? Sí. Sí. ¿Sí? sí. Bastante. Porque sí lo necesitan. Ahora tanto los padres como tanto los hijos necesitamos ayuda. Necesitan ayuda, sobre todo. Brenda and her family were able to seek help with counseling. But for many Latina teens around the U.S., access to mental health resources is just one of many barriers facing a demographic that has historically had elevated rates of anxiety and depression. According to the 2017 CDC Youth Risk Behavior Surveillance Report, 10.5% of Latina high school students in the U.S. attempted suicide, compared to 7.3% of white females, 5.8% of Latino males, and 4.6% of white male teens. Dr. Carolina Hausman Stabile is a professor of social work at Bryn Mawr College, who has dedicated her studies to analyzing what might be driving these numbers. Some of the girls we talk to are first-generation Latinas, right? And they're carrying a lot of responsibility in their shoulders. Some of them come from parents that are undocumented, others are going to school for the first time. Is there something about this particular community that makes them more susceptible to mental health illnesses? I would say that makes them more susceptible to anxiety in this very moment, yes. We know that first gen, and especially first gen in mixed immigration status families, meaning families whose parents might not be documented in the United States, and children are, is putting a lot of pressure on this group and is increasing the number of anxiety to unseen levels. More than 50% of them report anxiety symptoms. Is it fair to say young Latinas are going through a crisis? I would say that there is a crisis among young Latinas in this context accelerated by the political factors. And then themselves, because of the normal adolescent development, are facing a lot of stress in a cultural context that also blames Latinos and stigmatizes being Latina. And in context of a lot of violence, we cannot expect that that will not result in negative health outcomes. Think of it, adolescents are demographically the healthiest group in any society. Suicidal behaviors indicate there is a 
that the world is upside down. Anais is a teenager raised in a mixed immigration status household outside of Milwaukee. In 2019, her mother Brenda found her in the bathroom of their home after Anais had attempted suicide. So I haven't finished it yet, but mm-hmm. these are just some things that I kind of want envisioned for my ginsa. So this is for your ginsa, right? This yeah. is what you envision for your ginsa. So like this, it's a white dress with the gold top for the damas with boots. And then right here is like the invitations. Very pretty. Those are really pretty, I like those. What do the quinces mean to you? It's symbolizing a young Latina growing up. You've made it through 15 years. So you're celebrating you've been alive for 15 years. I know your mom mentioned that last summer when she found you in the bathroom that that suicide attempt was triggered by Snapchat. Mm -hmm. It had just been stuff piling up. Right. And then just me and her arguing. And I just gave up. I got a lot of rude comments on Snapchat. If I told someone something that they didn't like, they would be like, oh, go kill yourself. I felt hopeless, Mm -hmm. like I couldn't keep going. Yeah. There was no point anymore. Right. I had been trying for so long. And it just didn't seem to get better. Sí, a calentar el arroz, las tortillas. Entre ustedes hablan siempre en español. Siempre. Sí. Español, inglés, de todo. Él casi no habla inglés. Sí sabe, pero no quiere. You obviously, why, why are the scissors on the couch? When you see something like scissors, elements I could hurt, no? Does that trigger you? It scares me, yeah. And with her, it was pencil sharpeners. The the knife, the blade that goes with them. A pencil sharpener blade. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to bubble wrap this house? Like, take out the plastic, all the windows, cover them in plastic? I'm like, even then, she's going to find a way. So I just hope that she doesn't do it again. All right, go faster. Let's play a race. Let's see who can run faster, you or Nani. You went through a very difficult situation. And I know, Brenda, that you walked into um, the bathroom where you had tried to um, take your life. What, Brenda, was going on in your mind when you walked into that situation? My world collapsed. Um, It's scary. to see your child underwater and unconscious. I yelled to my 10-year-old to call 911. And here comes a five-year-old right behind me, so they obviously saw it too. And what I thought was just to bring her head out of the water, the water started to drain and I started to see the cuts. The cuts all over her legs, her arms. And she started to come back to consciousness as I'm like screaming at her. And I just kept asking her why, like, why? What took you there? And she just said that she didn't want to live. She, and it's uh, every parent's worst fear to find your child in that situation and you can't help them. I would say, oh, I'm fine. So I wasn't ready to tell myself I need the help. Was mental health ever something you grew up talking about? No, it's a taboo. Being obviously from Mexico, they think that it's like a choice, an emotion you can turn on and off. It wasn't like, oh, she suffers from depression. It was like, estar loca, or, you know, she's crazy. Hold on to here, or you're gonna fall. Now, looking back from your perspective as a mom, and after everything you've gone through, what, what do you think are some of the, the elements that led to, to an ISIS suicide attempt? Being a teenager, hormones, peers. Not only that, you're a Hispanic teenager trying to fit into a different culture also, but trying to accept who you are growing up. Just, it's difficult. I'm thinking that it's kind of crazy that you have to drive an hour to find a space to talk about these issues, right? We don't have anything locally, so which is why I'm also willing to travel every Monday. I am willing to do whatever it takes to get the help. With her having these conversations in a group setting with other girls her age, 
she sees that it's nothing to be ashamed of. We all talk to each other about it and we all support each other. So I look forward into going to Seeds and I feel like I get excited when I'm yeah. on the way there. We're gonna invite Paula in and then if possible, maybe in the, la the last two minutes, we'll still do our typical checkout. When I tell you all this fact that Latina teenagers are more likely to face depression and anxiety. Is that surprising to you all? No. no. Why not? They just have to bottle up their feelings. Yeah, that and they have like a lot of culture, real stress from their parents and a lot of other things. And then people talk about your race, telling you to go back to where you were from and stuff like that. So raise your hand if you've ever felt discriminated against. All of you have felt discriminated against. And why is it worth it to be in the space? Because before this group, I thought no one, no one ever felt how I did. It's helped me and my mom grow, like our bond. It's helped me grow. Because at first I thought like no one else went through the same thing. I thought it was just me. And just being in this group has helped me a lot. Because hearing other people's emotions and feelings to a problem can like also reflect on me because if they went through it, I could be like, oh, they went through it. I could go through it too. Mm -hmm. What happens after Seeds? When, when this program ends next year, it's almost about to end. What's next for you guys? I'm gonna cry. <laughs> You're gonna cry? <laughs> no. no, I'm good. Crying is We're gonna have a big slumber party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys, thank you all. Congratulations, you guys are awesome. If we had one in five children reporting this rule, wouldn't we, as a nation, trying to address this issue? Well, why is that the suicidal behaviors of younger girls are not a public health priority in our country? For the kids that are going through very similar things that you are, what's your advice to them? I would just tell them to like, even though like some families think it's crazy, Try to get help because I know it's hard. Don't give up. I know I, at some points of your life, you didn't really value yourself, right? And you didn't really see the beauty in yourself. Are you able to see yourself now? I feel like I value myself more. You feel stronger? Yeah. <laughs>